Minority Leader Harry Reid will retire at the end of his term after 30 years in the Senate, but he's not limping out the door. Reid took to the Senate floor today for the third time since last week's election to speak against the president-elect, this time demanding Donald Trump do something about the spike in bigoted incidents and alleged hate crimes over the past week. Today, I sat down with Harry Reid in his Senate office. I began by asking him what responsibility President-elect Trump holds in regards to those incidents. Southern Poverty Law Center, two days after the election, 347 instances of terrible stuff. Two days later, it's increased 40%. So I had to say something. And I said this morning, there's only one person that can put a stop to this, and that's Donald Trump. Stop it. He had a chance in 60 minutes, he didn't do it. So I mean, I, this is, this well, he is. he did look into the camera and say stop it, right? Well, uh, you say he did? Yes. I mean, at, at the prompting of Leslie Stahl, he. he oh, I saw that. But that, that was. I saw that. That that wasn't. That wasn't. That wasn't. You know, you can say things that you mean, and you can say things you're not trying to mean anything. No, he didn't say anything. Uh, here's this. Why doesn't he say something to American people? More than once. Didn't I, more than once. These are issues that people are quoting him, and these are awful things. Uh, one of my senators sent me something, you gotta see this. And it was the Martin Luther King Center, because I had given a speech earlier that day, Martin Luther King Center in Spokane. Graffiti, the N-word, all over that facility. Big, not, not that big, all over. It's, uh, now, I put in the record today, I only mentioned four things. I could have mentioned hundreds of things. So what I did, I said I have 17 pages covering hundreds of things that happened the last few days. So, no, I, I, think, I think he has to say something. What about, I mean, there's his responsibility to your mind to, to say something, but it also strikes me that um, Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell, your Senate colleagues here uh, in this building, uh, it, it seems that, and we should note that there are some examples, reported examples of violence against Trump supporters um, that have happened. It, it seems to me that it should be easy for political leaders of any party to be quite strenuous in condemning anything like this. But again, I've said this for a long time. Uh, Donald Trump was created by Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan. I've, I gave a major speech, at least in my, I thought it was major, where I talked about the fact that I went over item by item that all this birthism and all the stuff on immigration, all the stuff dealing with Muslims, that all came from this Congress, and Trump just picked up on it. Here's the deeper question. When you, you have these incidents of harassment, sometimes violence, you have uh, some very ugly rhetoric that the candidate himself, now president-elect, has used. You've been in politics a long time. Do you view President-elect Trump as someone who you think is going to be a bad president, or do you view him as a fundamental threat to the republic? I hope my first few days of going through the trauma of the election, an election where Hillary Clinton got two million more votes than he did, and I understand the electoral system, a system where she lost uh, four states by less than 100,000 votes combined. It took me a while to accept that the next 24 hours after the election, but then I was concerned, is the world gonna be destroyed? I mean, he's talked openly about getting rid of the Iran nuclear agreement, getting rid of our NATO allies or making them pay more. The same with Japan, who I understand he's meeting with soon, uh, without any preparation whatsoever. Uh, so I spent a day or two Worried about, is the world going to be blown up? Uh, he's in bed with the Russians. Russians just now have a deal I learned today with Nicaragua where there's some 50 tanks to Nicaragua next door to Costa Rica who doesn't even have an army. Uh, but now I've been concentrating after having, well, maybe you're not going to blow it up right away. I've been worried about things. Nevada is a state that has 87% of the land is owned by the federal government. We have people now, they're talking about pushing a bill through the house to turn all this over to the, so rich guys can buy this land. Not all of it, big chunks of it. That land, I'm from Nevada, but that land is just as much yours as it is mine. 
and to think that something like this is happening. So, I, uh, so do I think he's going to be a good president? I hope so. But in the way we, the campaign was engineered and what he's done after the campaign, I have grave doubts for our country. I mean, and I'm disappointed, Chris, for a couple things. I think we, not just senators, House members, should be saying something about these people who are being considered for cabinet posts. Giuliani, to be Secretary of State? I mean, where's he been to Canada? I mean, wh what is this all about? He's a lobbyist. He was mayor of New York City. Or how about Bolton? This guy, there's nobody in America that's more to the right than he is. Sarah Palin, Secretary of Interior, 87% of the land of the state of Nevada is federally owned, Secretary of Interior. Um, to have Kurt Kobach to be Attorney General. Now that name might not mean much to everybody, but your viewers should understand. Chris Kobach. What did I call him, Kurt? Yeah, yeah, yeah Chris. Chris. Yeah, Chris, I'm sorry. Long time Secretary of State of Kansas, who doesn't believe in people voting. He wants just the elite to vote. And he's proven that with all of his craziness and stopping people from voting not only in Kansas but around the country. I, These things he, are all. He would, he would say, I should just say that he would say that, of course, he wants uh, to make sure it's only citizens voting. The, the law that he passed in Kansas was on that. Okay, Chris, fine. We'll go, we'll dance that. In the interest we'll of fairness. We'll dance that tune again, and I appreciate you trying to be fair. But he or no one else can find any, any fraud. Over two million people they looked at who voted. There were three or four instances of people who shouldn't have been voting. Well, I don't know what that percentage is, but pretty low. So the, 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 the names that are being circulated for the cabinet um, obviously make you worried. And you know, I get up and read the Hill Papers Day. Who's complaining? Not a Democrat, but Rand Paul. What do you mean by that? What I mean is I'm, I would like some of my Democratic colleagues in the House and in the Senate to talk about some of these. I mean, I, I look, I want to do, I think I'm going to be gone next year. I won't be leading the Senate. And I, I think, I hope we can get some stuff done. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.